Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are building a mod-free Yamatai Palace on the Exiled Lands, so without further ado, let's get started. Seeing as this is such a large build, this video will of course be a speed build. As usual, I'll be talking through the ideas and inspirations behind this build, alongside any technical processes that I used, any difficulties or issues I encountered, and then finally we'll go through the finished build together. Though this is quite a large build, the base plate is actually quite simple as you can see by the blueprint on screen now. It's fairly simple because it's designed in a symmetrical fashion that lends itself quite well to the sort of rising structure I'm attempting to give to this palace. I built the base plate using Yamatai foundations and I did initially construct a bridge which you'll be able to see connecting to the bottom left of the palace courtyard but ignore that as I'll be rebuilding it shortly. On the topic of the bridge, it's a quite interesting segment of this build. To lead into the palace, I wanted a fairly modest bridge that gently rises and falls over the course of just under one tile's worth of height, something that would usually be impossible, of course. However, I managed to get this effect by using fence foundations to underclip subsequent foundations. You may have seen me use this trick once or twice before, it's not something I really utilise all that often, but it is a great little method for adding a bit of extra shape and interest to certain parts of the build. And the best part is it doesn't require any mods to actually do this, so it is a really nice mod-free alternative. Seeing as I am, admittedly, horribly out of practice with this technique, it did require a little bit of trial and error here and there to ensure the heights were all correct, and could transition smoothly into the landing on both the shore and the palace side of the build. But eventually, I managed to get the bridge to come to the proper settling point, whilst retaining a consistent pattern with the gentle rise and fall of the bridge. This pattern needs to be really specific. You only want to leave the thickness of one ceiling tile between each foundation, otherwise you can't just smoothly walk up and down them, you'll instead have to jump, which you of course don't want. I kept the foundations between every two ceilings to ensure the bridge had some good visual structure, and I was then able to finish off the bridge with frames, fences and crenellated walls, and of course pillars supporting the ceilings, though I would later choose to add some roof pieces to the bridge to sort of give it a covered look, which I think works really nicely. Once I'd completed the bridge, building the palace itself was really quite easy, actually. I usually try my best to avoid symmetrical builds as I find it encourages some fairly bad habits in my building style, though the symmetrical layout works perfectly well for this design, as I'll be having a fairly large rectangular courtyard in front of the palace, and the view of the symmetrical palace rising high above the courtyard is just too good to say no to. Building up the walls of the palace was quite a simple affair. I went for a very standard format of three floors, each two tiles high. I included window frames fairly liberally around the build, and I also segmented off different sections from the main hall. This included two staircase towers on either side of said hall, and also some wings that run down the bottom left and bottom right sides of the build around the courtyard, which will contain workshops, bedrooms, meeting rooms, etc. It's been quite a while since my last Yamatai build, and I've wanted to make one for a good few weeks now, but for some reason my mind has just been completely blank when trying to construct almost anything Yamatai themed. I've probably built and then subsequently torn down about three or four different Yamatai builds, including homes and workshops and palaces a little smaller than this. It's probably just me, but sometimes it's just one of those things where I can't really come up with anything I'm really happy with in regards to a specific build or theme, but I am actually very pleased with this build. I think the bridge lends itself really well to this palace, and the overall shape, structure and layout of the build is pretty nice, with a decent flow and accessibility throughout the build, all based around the main hall being the heart of the palace. Now, considering the size of the build, I expected to have tons and tons of stability issues, but actually, I didn't really run into many issues at all. I had one or two clipping issues with the inverted sloped sides on one or two of the bay windows, but that's to be expected most of the time, and I also encountered a couple of stability issues here and there, but all of the issues were very quickly and easily rectified, making this into quite a stress-free build, as stress-free as a large build can be anyway. 
As I mentioned earlier, there are no mods included in the construction of this build at all. Of course, I do have Pippi running so I can place NPCs inside the build, but aside from them, everything else is also mod free, including of course all the decorations. Therefore, if you wanted to reconstruct this build on console, you definitely can. Anyway, I think that is about all I have to say for this build, it came out pretty well and I'm looking forward to walking through the finished build shortly. As always, I'll let the construction phase run and then we'll go through the finished and decorated build together in the furnishing phase. So with that being said, enjoy the rest of the construction and I will see you in the furnishing phase.
Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to, of course, furnish. Approaching the build, I've lit the bridge with Aquilonian braziers, and I've decorated the courtyard with a fountain statue and Ketan braziers, including planters near the door and seats underneath the sun covers on either side. I've also placed some warlord guards in the courtyard, and demon archers watching over the bridge on either side of the first floor. Entering the palace, we end up in the main hall, which I've left fairly sparsely decorated to allow the architecture to speak for itself in this area. Yamatai is a fairly busy material set, visually anyway, and with the fences, pillars, and verticality here, any extra decorations risk making this initial area just far too busy. However, as you get deeper into the main hall, we'll encounter some more decorations. Of course, it's pretty hard to miss the Green Dragon Trophy looming ahead on the wall, but there's also a throne here for the monarch of the palace, alongside some royal warlord guards on either side of his table. In front of him is where the nearby peasants can pledge their fealty, and ask for supplies, protection, or new constructions in their nearby village. The left wing of the ground floor contains a small but capable two-room workshop containing facilities for working with metals, wood, hides, potions and more. The right wing contains a meeting place where the staff of the palace can be briefed on planned visitors to the palace, new security procedures and even potential attacks. Next door is a small cramped bedroom where some of the staff will sleep between their shifts. Heading up to the first floor, the balcony provides some valuable verticality and looks over proceedings in the main hall. In the left wing of the first floor is a small kitchen and bar area, so that the palace guards can eat or drink between shifts, and it's also where the food is prepared for the monarch. Both wings also provide an overwatch platform outside that guards the bridge and palace entrance, manned by demon archers. In the right wing is a small break room for the guards where they can eat, talk, rest or just take a quick nap. Heading upstairs once more we reach the bedroom of the monarch. This is a spacious yet private area containing a comfortable bed, storage and display places for valuables, a writing desk and access to a balcony that looks over the courtyard. This bedroom also provides some extra verticality all the way down to the ground floor and has a raised roof so that it really feels like a prestigious bedroom.
Finally, each of the staircase towers provides a platform at the very top to watch over the nearby area, allowing for scouting and intel gathering on nearby wildlife, bandits or traders in the area. And there we have it, a Yamatai palace in the exiled lands right between the sentinels. Thanks for watching, it's been a little while since my last speed build and even longer since my last Yamatai build, so it was nice to be able to build this palace, I'm pretty happy with it and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, discord roles and more. On that note, a massive thanks to our patrons Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Ivy, Torn, CoffeeMan04 and Eagle Rose. As always, thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you soon.